Guten Tag, ich heiße Caroline Boshoff und ich wohne in Südafrika. I'm very proud of my German ancestry and until today my favorite uncle stays in Hannover. My family names include Scherer, Minstermann and Und Turnau. My grandparents both still speak proper German and although my German isn't very good, I can tell you what's my favorite word. Nachtisch. If grandma asks me, I want Nachtisch, jawohl. Um, I must say that that's me, but there's another side to me. And many people call me a child with a disability, but they will never know and understand what it really means to me. They don't know what it hurts inside. It hurts me so bad because the word disability actually implies that I can't do things. It implies that I'm not able to do things that normal people can do. And from a very young age, I decided that I am not going to allow the word disability to determine my future. And a little background story of my education, from a very young age, people could see that I'm different that um, my work wasn't as good as the others, but they couldn't understand why. Why is this intelligent child speaking properly, doing everything, looking smart? Why can she just not read and write? Teachers thought that I'm lazy and I didn't want to work, but they never knew the real me and the real problem. They never knew that dyslexia, meaning I struggle to read and write, was the one thing taking me back. I would say, and I would sit there, and I was very good at hiding it, like really good. I used to listen to the teacher when she reads the word. I used to copy it. And one day my mother couldn't realize, on every time I read page nine, I sneeze. Why do I sneeze on page nine? And then she asked the teacher, what happened? Why every time here? Yeah? The teacher said that she sneezed a lot that day when she was reading the story. That just shows you at the age of seven years old, I already got ways to cope with my dyslexia. I didn't understand why the letters are flying all over, why the letters are upside down. I didn't even realize that I couldn't see the letters properly. But never mind, a few years later, I still struggle with dyslexia. I still can't read properly. Maybe I'll never be able to read fluently, but with the right technology and the right system of devices, I can do anything I want to. I can read books. I can do university work. I must say that my journey was a very long journey. Children used to bully me a lot and no one will believe me, but I was thrown in a dustbin in grade one. They told me that I belong in, in the trash because I'm worth nothing. I can do nothing. And that at a very young age, if children do that to you, something just inside you breaks and you immediately feel that you're not part of the society. You immediately feel that you are outsider. You immediately feel that you're dumb and stupid. Why am I different? And I never understood it. But luckily for me, my grandmother and my mother and my whole family helped me. They took me to a testing place. They tested me. I got, they said, I have dyslexia. What now? And my grandmother helped me to read and write. She's a teacher. Uh, my grandfather helped me with maths. And my life started getting better. Um, my faith, I got faith. And I started believing and I believe that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4 verse 13. And that was my motto right through school. To think that I can't do anything from being teased so bad, breaking down my self-esteem until I have hope. And maybe never I'll be a good reader, but I'll always have something that people don't have. And that's hope. Hope for a better day, hope for a better future. Because from a very young age, I decided that this dyslexia is not going to rule my world. 
Once a newspaper reporter asked me, what if you didn't have dyslexia? Would have you been so successful? What would have been different? Who would have Caroline Borsov been? And I looked very hard in the window and I thought, what would I have been? Would I have just been a normal child, playing TV games, giving attitude to my mother, doing different things? And yes, I would have been just a normal child. I would have never had that stride. I would have never wanted to do something better. I'd, I would have never ever wanted to do certain things to prove to other people that I'm normal. But in actual reality, I'm proving that I'm different and that different isn't wrong. Different is never wrong when you are proud to be different. I was born to stand out and not stand in. And people will always admire the successes I did. I'm currently in my second year at the University of Nelson Mandela um, studying teaching. I came first in the Eastern Cape in my matric year. So in South Africa, that's the last year of academics. And I came first in the Eastern Cape for students with disability and I did it. I looked down there at the stage when I got my trophy and I didn't see one child who bullied me. I didn't see one that didn't believe in me. I only saw the people that loved me. I only saw the people that said I can do it. And that just shows that you should never ever listen to anyone anyone that says you can't do it because if you put your mind to it you can do it and that's one thing i'm happy that i decided to do that i will never give up i've done science expo here in south africa and i represented south africa and i came first place at the kenya science and engineering fair i represented south africa and i have a disability the sky's the limit I, would, I appeared many times on the TV and newspapers because I'm an activist for people with disabilities. Because I believe with people with disabilities, no matter whether you're deaf, you can't see, if you have a physical disability, a mental disability, that you can do what you do the best. And you should believe in yourself because no one else will. You should believe in yourself. You should get a structure of people that love you and that will support you. And that's one thing that you should always and never be scared to speak from the heart. I would say that organizations like APD really helps people with disabilities because they give you a home away from home. They will help you when you are in the need of most. Remember when the start of the video I said that I was in a very down valley. I was very upset. I was very sad. That's a whole thing. You should accept your disability. Once you accept it, anything is the, the sky is then the limit. But it's very hard to accept. Even me, that I'm 20 now, it's sometimes very hard for me to accept. Because every time if I have to read something, I must tell, listen, yeah, I can't do it. And every time it happens again and again. And later on, it's very sore. It's a touchy subject. But you must accept it. It's the first thing. Step. Like, like Martin Luther King, I had a dream. But my dream wasn't a big dream to change the world. My dream was a small dream to change myself. Being different of other children isn't easy. And to know your limitations is very hard. But the first thing you should do is you should believe in yourself. And I accepted it. I believe in the Lord that gives me strength and I know my disability makes my abilities so much better. Thank you ladies and gentlemen and please remember that you can do anything you put your mind to. Bye. Auf Wiedersehen.